hi everyone. Thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Kara Ruda joining me today. Welcome, Kara. Thank you. Happy to be here. And um, Kara's been, people might remember, Kara's been our author for the day before. So great to have you back chatting to me. Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. It's fun. <laughs> so a little bit about Kara. So Kara's an award-winning USA Today and Amazon Charts best-selling author of contemporary fiction that explores what goes on behind the surface of seemingly perfect lives. Her novels of dispense, domestic suspense include Somebody's Home, The Next Wife, The Favourite Daughter and Best Day Ever and All the Difference. And yeah, no, it's great. You've got those covers out the back there as well. My subtle marketing. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say they're all um, amazing covers. Thanks. Yeah, I love the covers too. Thank you. Her latest, The Widow, will be released in November 2022. And, oh, and you've got that one as well. I don't have, I don't have yeah. a cover up there yet, but this is what it looks like. I really yeah. love this one too. That's yeah. just for now. No, that's a good one as well. Um, today, Kira's work has been translated into more than 10 languages. Um, a former magazine editor and society columnist, Kara won the Stevie Award for Women in Business for creating the first female-focused residential real estate brand, Real Living, and growing the brand to more than 22 states before it sailed to Berkshire Hathaway. Her first book, Real You, incorporated eight essentials for women enterprises, led, sorry, interpreters, oh, sorry, I can't <laughs> entrepreneurs i'm saying the word wrong um led to a national speaking tour where she inspired thousands active in areas of homeliness food security and empowering women and girls in her 20s as a volunteer she created the first walk in emergency shelter for homeless families in central ohio Kara has received numerous awards for her community service, including the National Kiwi, Kiwi I'm not quite sure if I can say that one. Oh, Qantas. Qantas, yeah. is it? Okay. They gave you a long bio for me. Sorry <laughs> about that. That's all right. <laughs> to Mankind Award, among others. Recently, Kara was appointed by Governor Gavin Newsom to the California Volunteers Commission, and she serves on the Board of Trustees of the Laguna Art Museum and volunteers at the Laguna Beach Food Pantry. Kira lives in South Carolina, so South California, <laughs> with her family. Sorry, I'm saying so many words wrong at the moment. No, that's all right. It um, was a big, that was such a long bio. Yeah. But um, I'm glad that I read it all out because you've certainly been involved in a lot of things and um, done a lot of community things as well. And like I said, your books are about what's beneath the surface and a bit of um, domestic suspense. From your involvement in the communities, I'm sure you've probably seen some of these things going on and... <laughs> Right, maybe so. Yeah. Well, I think that's the point too, right? Like I'm kind of a product of the suburbs mm. and um, where the grass is always greener and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think there is a lot of that. And now with social media, mm. there, that's what everybody, you know, a lot of people do pretend to have perfect lives and we all know that that's not really a possibility. Yeah, exactly. And I wanted to say as well, I've just finished reading um, Somebody's Home and really really loved it it's um really hooked me in and wanted me to keep reading it to find out what actually was going on because there were quite a few little um twists and turns and strange things going on good i'm glad you liked it thank you that would have been awkward if you didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. i guess it'd be a really fast conversation <laughs> exactly. so i didn't like the book thanks for coming i'll see you later yeah i mean we were yeah somebody's home I, yeah it's probably my darkest one yet i wrote mm. it during the pandemic like the early phase of the pandemic and so it kind of all that angst about oh, what, pardon, that's so. in the air yeah yeah and and also the notion that um you know, we were all at home on lockdown and what if home wasn't safe? So that's mm. kind of where that idea started. Mm. 
Mm. And um, also, I was just saying to you before as well, I think um, I'm looking forward to reading next of your The Next Wife, which sounds really good as well. Do you want to start off by maybe like telling us a little bit about your books? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, like it said in that really long bio, um, mm-hmm. my, um, I, I've always been fascinated with what's beneath the surface is seemingly perfect lives, because I think that's where a lot of people go to hide. And in my particular case with my domestic suspense books, I tend to have a lot of, um, grownups behaving badly. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's kind of the theme of all of them. Um, best day ever was kind of my first book that, um, broke out in this area and, it features a guy, Paul, who will tell you that he is the best husband and the best father and uh, the best of everything. And he's probably not what he seems. And then the favorite daughter deals with Jane, who's a grieving mother who just lost her daughter. And she also will tell you <laughs> she's the perfect mom. So I kind of have this whole uh, notion of these characters. And, and the, in the case of those two, it's first person point of view. So they have to be a little hopefully witty to keep you reading with them. And so I had fun with those. The next wife is kind of a cat and mouse story about the first wife and the second wife. And then somebody's home, which you just read is, as I said, kind of my darkest where we're um, Mm -hmm. talking about kind of themes of belonging. And what if your home wasn't safe? Uh, Mom decides to start over and she's bought a new house across town and she, unbeknownst to her senior in high school daughter, takes her to go and show her the house right as the story unfolds. And, um, the daughter's like, my mom's having a midlife crisis. And the mom's like, we're going to start over. It's going to be great. And mm. the only problem is, as part of the deal, she made the decision really fast to buy the house. She agreed with to let the seller's 20-something son yeah. stay in the carriage house. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of maybe a bad choice yeah. <laughs> she made. <laughs> and it's quite um, sensitive things that you're writing about. Do you find you have readers contacting you to say they've had similar experiences or your books have really touched them? And Yeah, um, I mean, yes, some people are just terrified of my people, mm. <laughs> characters. Um, mm. I ha- the probably one of the most touching things about Best Day Ever was I would get, um, not to give it too much away, but I would get letters from readers telling me their Best Day Ever, which would be when they got away from their spouse that yeah. wasn't who they thought they were and stuff. Mm. So, I mean, that's nice. I, I guess my whole point of writing is to entertain people. So I just love hearing from people that they read it in one day or they read it overnight, you know, that mm. kind of stuff is what I love to hear about. And I think in the next wave, it's been fun because the story of the first and second wives have been told a lot, but hopefully this is a whole different twist yeah. uh, on yeah. that story. So, and that's your new book, did you say, or what? Do you want to tell us something about your book you've got writing at the moment? Oh, yeah. Well, the, my next one is The Widow. This is kind of mm. <laughs> just a printout, but yeah. yeah, so that one's coming out in November. And this one's kind of fun because it's based on my husband was in, con- in the U.S. Um, Congress for okay. a couple of years. And yeah. so I got to kind of... Um, you know, learn DC and kind of join some clubs and find out, you know, kind of a little bit how it works. I mean, mm-hmm. you'd have to be there for a long time to figure out. But so this is based on a congressman's wife and uh, the congressman and kind of, um, you know, I haven't even figured out how to tell. Control the story at all costs, avoid becoming the story. And so Jody Asher is a very, she's a very, um, she wants power. She she expects power. Her mm-hmm. husband's been in Congress for a long time, and uh, it's kind of the story of everything she'll do to keep power in yeah. DC. It's and I fun. think I see, is that out in November? Is that right? Yes. So is yeah, which is the US the... elections. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> so is that timed for that? I think so. I mean, yeah. it's it's unusual for me to have two books out in one year. Mm. So I had somebody's home in January, and then I was really excited that they slotted it in for November. So yeah, I yeah, think it does that's... coincide with that. Yeah. So is that in like the final editing stages at the moment? Or... Yeah, it's all finished. So it's um, it's out there in the world. I'm expecting advanced reader copies sometime soon. Okay. So yeah. yeah, it's out of my hands <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I've got a few people watching. Um, just 
reminding the people watching, if you do have any questions for Kara, please um, type them and I can read them out. I've got a question from Sharon. She says your books sound really good and the covers are very eye-catching. She wonders if you have any input at all in the, your covers. You know, uh, sort of I do. I, um, with The Next Wife, this is the, for, the first two were with a different publisher and mm. not really much input kind of like here you go and this the new publisher i'm with they give me a couple choices but with both of these the next wife and somebody's home it was like that i just love the sunglasses woman right mm. away as soon as i saw her i'm like mm. oh yeah that's completely tish i mm. think it's tish. that's one of the characters that's the second wife or the next wife and then somebody's home the same thing i i think they just capture the um kind of the mystery and also I don't know whether she's afraid of something on the cover or yeah, she's she running for something. You know, yeah. It's such a great yeah. expression. And then mm. when I saw the widow, I'm like, the only, I gave him direction and I said, um, it'd be great if there were pearls in the cover oh, somehow okay. because a lot yeah. of people in DC wear pearls mm. still. And uh, that's where the, yeah, mm. I just loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, they are all great covers. And could you tell us a little bit, like before you were, um, before you wrote your first book, had you thought that you wanted to be an author like you had been doing writing in your career I think before hadn't you but more for magazines and right more like journalist side yeah writing and I was an English major and I mm. knew since third grade I wanted to be a novelist I you did? my yeah. third grade teacher had us mm. write to the person we wanted to become and so I wrote to the um, author of Make Way for Ducklings and he wrote me back and said actually i'm an illustrator not an author try harder yeah. but anyway it was really funny but well not at the time it's probably too sad but no i'm now i'm not sad but yeah so i after you read that bio and um, my husband and i ran a company and built it up into a big company and then we ended up writing a, i ended up writing a book about it for women entrepreneurs and then i ended up touring the country and kind of speaking to women entrepreneurs and at this point we're selling the business like my role and it is, is going to be over and i remember i was on stage in this big conference in austin and there were thousands of women and i always ask people like so are you putting living the life of your dreams or you're putting your passion into action you know mm. it's never too late <laughs> just go for it and then i realized like i hadn't taken my advice my own advice because i've always dreamed of writing a novel so that's kind of what got me got me going mm. and when you decided that how hard or easy was it to get your first book published oh my gosh so easy no i'm kidding okay <laughs> <laughs> so my first the uh really incorporated the business book i wrote an outline and a sample chapter and i sent it away to an agent and a publisher and got a call back like the next day from both we want it and they have so so crazy nothing like that ever happens in mm -hmm. publishing and by the way you're not supposed to send it to the publishing hush just just send it. anyway but, so i yeah. broke all the rules and anyway so then my first novel novel was based loosely it's called here home hope and it's based loosely on the kind of principles that were in my nonfiction story and it, you know, like got close, got close and all these uh, mm. publishing houses. And then I just decided to self-publish or I guess it's hybrid publishing when you go. So I went with Greenleaf Book Group, but you pay to publish and they, they put a great package together and all that stuff, but it's still not traditional publishing. So I've, I've done that. And then a couple more of mine, I did self-publishing and it was kind of great to like learn how to do the algorithms and mm. all that stuff. But there's nothing like the reach I've found of traditional publishing. Yeah. So that's when I say best day ever was kind of my breakout book. Mm -hmm. And when you're writing an emotionally draining scene, is there something that you need to do to get in the right mood? Well, for me, the problem I have is sometimes I scare myself. Oh, really? Because so, <laughs> some of my, as you know, in somebody's home, some of my characters yeah, can get a little a naughty. Yeah. So I'll be up here and all of a sudden, like one of my characters will start doing something really, really horrible and I'll mm. have to run downstairs. My office is upstairs. <laughs> And my husband's like, did you just scare yourself again? I'm like, I did. I did. I just have to get away from them for a little bit. But yeah, that's, and, and I, when I write, I am the character. So my husband says I make all the facial expressions oh, really? of like whoever I'm writing, which yeah. is kind of funny too. So yeah, yeah. that would be my process. And talking about your characters, of all your books, if you could be um, one of the characters for a day, who would you choose to be and why? 
Yeah, no, I'm telling you, I have some very, very not nice characters, but I would probably pick who? Um, I pick Kate in the next wife because I think she's very clever. Mm. She is the first wife. And what do your heart readers will love about your books? I hope. I mean, my best compliment is that it's a quick read and um that i kept somebody up late at night and also if they appreciate the dark humor i try to mm. my characters tend to have a little bit of dark humor sprinkled throughout in like the favorite daughter for example my character jane she's obsessed with ways that you can accidentally die at home so i mean her observations are kind of funny like death by dishwasher you know if you leave a oh, knife up and, you know. so um so i like it when people get the humor too that's kind of nice mm. And I like how you said that you hope that readers like have a quick read and want to keep them up at night because that's exactly what I had with somebody's home. Um, okay. I read it probably over two nights and then just finished it off this morning because I needed to find out what had happened and yeah, <laughs> it really drew me in. Um, what do you like reading yourself and is there anything you might have read lately that you could recommend to us? I mean, I read, I, it's funny, during the pandemic, I couldn't read at all, but now I'm back reading again, which is so nice. Um, I read pretty broadly. I have to admit, I like to read in the genre that I write. I mean, I've always been drawn to suspense and, mm. and spy novels and all that good stuff. So right now, that's kind of where I, I'm hanging out. But I, I, in preparation, I have my little reading stack over here. Okay, so I just read The Golden Couple, which was really good by... Sarah Pekinen and Greer Hendricks. Janelle Brown's latest, I'll Be You, that was pretty creepy. It's about okay. twins, child stars, and they like switch places a lot. And that's, oh, it's a really nice. good story. Um, just finished Let's Not Do That Again by Great Ender. Brilliant, just such a sense of humor. So anyway, yeah, I have a whole, oh, I'm about to read Woman on Fire by Lisa Barr. That's gotten like huge reviews. So. Mm. No, thanks for those recommendations. We always sure. love getting recommendations um sarah wonders what draws you to writing books with characters that are not nice <laughs> i know it's, it's funny when i because i started out in women's fiction so my people were pretty happy and nothing really terrible mm. happened so much and then i just kept getting darker and darker and darker so you know um i guess it's kind of a reflection of what you see in the world right or your experiences mm. so with Paul and Best Day Ever, I didn't really know who my inspiration for him was. Mm -hmm. And then actually on book tour, when, you know, readers are telling me about him and it's interesting, you create a character and then at least in my perspective, I kind of see him like from the front, like this is him. And then you go on book tour and people start shading in like all around, like everybody's perspective of your mm -hmm. characters kind of helps you build more of a rounded mm -hmm. <laughs> image of him. And then I realized, Paul was like an amalgamation of all my splendidly horrible bosses that I oh, had. Really? I mean, I had, oh my gosh, I had the worst male bosses like in my early career. I can't mm -hmm. even tell you. So anyway, and I think all of their like words kind of stuck in there in my head and came, came out. So it's maybe cathartic. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And what sort of research have you found that you've had to do for your books? And I'm wondering if maybe there's something that really surprised you that you could share with us that you found while doing research? Yeah, I mean, I guess my overall most surprising thing is there are so many ways to kill people, yeah. <laughs> fictionally. <laughs> I mean, seriously, so my characters, I, I don't write outlines, so I'm, I'm a pantser is what they call you. And so my, you know, whoever I'm writing at the moment might need a way to kill somebody. And there's just, I mean, so there's really yeah. unlimited. Mm. <laughs> and my search history is just terrifying, <laughs> terrifying. And when my husband was in Congress, he was always like, somebody's going to hack your computer yeah. and find all those murderous things mm. and we're going to be in big trouble. But, you know, it's all for my work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining me. It's been great chatting to you. And I'm really looking forward to reading more of your books. Just wanting to know if you want to let people know how they can follow you and know what's going on with you sure yeah um thanks for having me again it was great chatting with you and i am on facebook at kara ruda books you can find me there and then instagram kara ruda um pretty much everywhere kara ruda mm -hmm. <laughs> you can find me and my website kara lots of vowels but once you learn how to say it it's not that bad yeah <laughs>
Well, thanks so much again and um, hope I do have a chance to chat to you again. Yeah, and, love it. And also thanks to the people who joined in and the questions we got. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.